Hi, folks. Pastor Mike Spalding here with my good friend and big brother. I am Pastor Casper, and we're here together to encourage you to keep listening to Deception Detection Radio because we're both on this network with our individual shows. Yes, and yes. We're going to be doing some things together as well. Not to not say no more. Hey, folks. Tune in Deception Detection Radio. Some of the best programming in Christian talk, news, encouragement, and Bible studies. God bless you. God bless. Hey, friends, thanks for joining me today. We've got a fantastic guest joining us today, Bradley Dean. And, and I, Bradley, thanks for taking the time. I know you're, you're busy. You're, you're uh, actually on a ministry uh, uh, visit down south and, uh, and doing some teaching and preaching. So thanks for making time to join me, Bradley. Well, thank you for your trust, man. I mean, this is what we're doing and this is what we do. So, again, I just appreciate your trust and thank you for having me. Yes, well, I was uh, going over some some uh, data and content today, and looking back, the last time that we chatted, um, you were on uh, Soaring Eagle Radio with me, and it made me laugh out loud, Bradley, because it was three years to the day, January the twenty eighth of twenty sixteen, you and I chatted on Soaring Eagle Radio. So, so <laughs> I couldn't believe it'd been three years. Yeah. It, yeah. it flies, doesn't it? Yeah, there's a oh, lot of this my. going on, but yeah, yeah, interesting. Yeah, well, when you're busy, when you're busy working for the Lord and and uh, fighting off the, the the darkness, then time flies by. Um, Jared, I wanted to start today just by um, letting people know about WTTPFM. This is one of the ministries that I I really haven't uh, said too much about. But I'd like for people to know about WTTP-FM. And, of course, uh, WTTP-FM is the radio uh, uh, outreach ministry of Calvary Chapel of Lima. So this is our radio station, the church's radio station. Uh, and, and, and we're not like um, other, when you, when you think Christian radio today, uh, unfortunately, there's a there's a, a framework within which we think about Christian radio, and normally it's not good. Well, our station is different. WTTPFM, and you can find it, WTTPFM.com, is Bible teaching. Bible teaching and Christian talk radio. And so uh, we don't play music. Um, it's it's 24-7 Bible teaching Got some some dude on there, Mike Spalding with Soaring Eagle Radio, and of course we have our our uh, services on there. But here's what I want. Here's the reason I want to call your attention to WTTP. Um, we have the Mark Harrington Show, Created Equal. The uh, some people refer to to Mark as an apologetics ministry, and I think that's true. It, it is an apologetics ministry. It is an apologetics ministry that focuses on making the argument for life. You can call it pro-life, you can call it abolitionist, whatever, however you want to term it. But the thing that I appreciate about Mark is his ministry is focused on answering the objections or answering the the, the abortion argument, uh, all of the, the false narratives and the excuses for murdering unborn children. Mark trains up young people and takes them to the street so that they can put into practice what they learn and understand how to answer the abortion argument. He does fantastic work. So his program, Mark Harrington Show, is on WTTP FM every Saturday and Sunday from 5.30 to 6. So you can tune in, and that's Eastern Standard Time, of course. We're here in Ohio. We have uh, Rob Pugh's show. His commentary is on... Uh, every Sunday morning at 6 a.m., you can find Rob Pugh on there. We have uh, Last Call Radio with B.J. Edwards. Uh, that's his pseudonym, but uh, 
Last Call Radio, Saturdays at, at 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. And Sunday, primetime slot 2 p.m., 2 to 3 p.m. Uh, on Sunday afternoons. Uh, BJ has some fantastic guests on uh, Last Call Radio, so make sure that you tune in. And we've got Bradley Dean, Sons of Liberty uh, Radio, is on Sunday mornings at 11 a.m., 11 to 12 noon. Bradley Dean, uh, Sons of Liberty Radio, is on WTTP FM. And of course, we have Coach Dave. Coach Dave's been on for oh, a couple of years now. He's on Saturday and Sunday evenings from 6 to 7. You can catch Coach Dave and then uh, Russ Dizdar. We carry Russ from 7 to 8 uh, on Saturdays and Sundays. Uh, so, oh, there you go, Jared. Jared's got it up on the screen. So a lot of good programming there, folks. So I would encourage you. Um, and listen, we're just a small, low-power FM station. We're doing fantastic things for the Lord. We are putting Bible teachers, speakers, uh, people like Bradley, people like Mark Harrington out there to get the message out, to start activating the troops and telling them, encouraging them, equipping them to get in the fight. That's what it's all about. Okay. So there's that. Jared, um, if, if you wouldn't mind, could you show the, uh, the Dr. Mike Live homepage? Because folks, I've been encouraged to do this for quite some time. And, and I'm just not good at it at all. I'll, I'll confess that and make that, um, uh, make that confession right up front. There's a donate button on the Dr. Mike Live webpage. If you'd like to donate to support not just this show, but the ministry, many other ministries that are ongoing as a part or under the umbrella of the Dr. Mike Live um, ministry, then you can do that. Just go there, donate, and, uh, it's very much appreciated. There, see, I did it. I didn't break out in hives or sweat or anything else. Uh, that, that's a that's an inside joke, folks. I'm I'm not good at asking people if they would like to help. So there, I did it. Yeah. My guest is uh, Bradley Dean, and and again, I appreciate Bradley so much. He is uh, what I would call um, one of God's generals. What I mean by that is this. He knows what the battlefield looks like because he's done the time to survey. He's done the strategic work that's necessary to understand what the enemy is doing, the moves the enemy is is making, where the enemy is massing the troops, and he has determined what the countermeasures are. Bradley Dean is a man of God. He is the founder of You Can Run But You Cannot Hide International, the Sons of Liberty Media, Ministry with a mission to reshape America by redirecting the current and future generations of Americans, both morally and spiritually, through education, media, and the Judeo Christian values found in our U.S. Constitution. He is host of the live nationally syndicated radio broadcast, The Sons of Liberty, a weekly columnist for World Net Daily, and over 40 other columns nationwide. And might I add, the drummer of the band Junkyard Prophet, <laughs> as if you weren't doing enough already, Bradley. Welcome to the live show. Uh, sorry about that, but thank you for your trust, Mike. I appreciate it very much. Yes, well, thank you for joining me, Bradley. Um, I was on your website today, and, uh, and so we're going to hit the ground running here. Um, I was on your website, and I was reading uh, an article that you posted. There you go. Thank you, Jared. How does the deep state push their agenda forward without America's politicians doing it for them? <laughs> yeah. If ever there was a title that said it all, that's it right there. And then, and look at the first, the first quote right off the bat. I, I looked this up, folks. That's from Voltaire. It, it is difficult to free fools from the chains that they revere. Neil Postman said something very, very similar to that back in the '80s. Um, Bradley, we are in a in a in a heap of trouble in America today, and the church really is on the sidelines, in my opinion. Do you have a different view? 
Oh, absolutely not. I mean, uh, the greatest advocate to the homosexual agenda, to the abortion industry, uh, to crimes in politics uh, throughout falls to the church. Uh, it's the church's responsibility. We're called to be the light of the world that reproves darkness. And uh, as I just said uh, momentarily, friends, is the fact that the church is the greatest advocate to the crimes that are being committed today because of the silence of the church. And it was actually D. James Kennedy that said that to me when I was standing across uh, the street from him mm-hmm. about 12 years ago. And it's exactly right. The church is on the sidelines. It was John Adams, the second president of the United States, that said the church is called to be the moral compass of society. He said when that goes, everything else goes. And that's why we're in trouble today. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and in trouble, even to the degree now, so many churches are on the sidelines. They refuse to get involved because, uh, number one, they're, they're fearful that uh, they may experience some kind of, of blowback from the call, where of course you're going to experience blowback. They're not going to take it lying down, telling them that they're, they're going to bust hell's gates wide open if they continue down this path. Of course they're going to push back. But not only are churches on the sidelines, there are churches, and I know some of the folks in the huddle today um, have experienced this firsthand right here in Columbus, Ohio, about an hour and a half from where I live. One of the largest gay pride or gay shame parades, as some people are, are beginning to to uh, speak of them as, uh, some of the largest gay shame parades uh, uh, in America happen right here in the Midwest, and one of them is in Columbus, Ohio. And guess wh- guess who had uh, many dozens of the floats and hundreds of people marching in this parade in support of that depravity? Folks, guess who it was? You already know the answer. The churches, it was yeah. so-called Christians that were yeah. marching in support of this. And Bradley, I know you've seen that and you've been uh, speaking against that for a lot of years. Let's talk about this this, art, uh, this article that I, that I found today. Jared, in that article, there is a video and I'm hoping that it'll play because, um, now I'm not gonna make any friends with this uh, video. Um, <laughs> there are a lot of folks, Bradley, that believe that President Trump walks on water. Yep. And that's just not the case. Not, not at all. No, nope. not at all. Let's let's run this video for a few minutes, Jared, and then we're going to get into this. And I, I want Bradley to comment on it. This is from Bradley's uh, uh, website. It was embedded in how does the deep state push their agenda forward without America's politicians doing it for them? Well, they cannot. So let's look at this. The destructive practices to our Constitution are moving forward because of the moderation of our modern conservatives and their media outlets. Among modern conservatives, they are not the opposite of liberals. Today's conservatism is really only a reaction to a political philosophy and a very weak one at that. In essence, friends, the modern day conservatives are fraternizing with the enemy of your country. Can a man who essentially agrees with President Obama on all the key issues realistically become the Republican nominee for president? For example, why do the modern conservatives always capitulate or surrender to the emotions of the socialists when it comes to the law? Mitt Romney believes in all these things, but here's the crusher. So does President Obama. There's not a dime's worth of difference between them. Did they forget that hundreds of thousands of men and women died to ratify the Constitution that they so easily forfeit at every constitutional challenge? And that's even if the Constitution is brought up, which in most cases it's not. Why are they ashamed of the moral absolutes that they claim to stand for? The deception is modern conservatives don't really take an opposite view from liberals, only a slightly slower path in the same direction and same destination as liberals And at the end of the day, they come to the same conclusion, and America loses. 
What will happen if we ha are left with a choice among the major party candidates of Mitt Romney and Barack Obama? I have argued, Jake, that they are closer to each other than either of them is to Ron Paul or any of the founding fathers. Today's conservatives are simply yesterday's liberals. If we want our rights restored, then we'd better start electing God-fearing constitutionalists who are not willing to go along to get along. Conservative defines in Webster's 1828 as preservative, having power to preserve in a safe or entire state or from loss, waste, or injury. Friends, salt preserves and it stops putrefaction. Who said that we were to be the salt of the earth? Jesus said in Matthew 5, 13, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost its savor, where will shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. The conservatives of today have lost their savor and have allowed the Constitution to be trampled under the foot of government corruption. And speaking of corruption in our government, why have the American people thrown off the option of impeachment? Corrupt politicians are not allotted the duration of their term to destroy the Constitution, while the American people are taught by the modern conservatives to sit back and allow it to take place. Republics have been destroyed for the lack of impeachment, and it is the duty of every American in this country to throw off tyranny in our government. Thomas Jefferson rightly stated, the two enemies of the people are criminals and government. So let us tie the second down with the chains of the Constitution so the second will not become the legalized version of the first. Have you ever taken the time to notice in America that the modern-day conservatives always complain about the left while they debate away the pith and marrow of who we are as a people? And in the end, the left wins the day only to show the hypocrisy of the modern-day conservative? America... There wouldn't be a left if the right was doing the right thing at all times. Let me turn the lights on here for you for a minute. We have one constitution, not two. The two-party system gives the impression to the American people that the left can do what they want to do when they are in power, and the right can do what they want to do when they are in power. Well, let me set the record straight. They're both wrong. The constitution is the constitution. The law is the law. Truth is truth, and truth is not changed by our opinions. Truth changes our opinions to fit our truths. It is okay, friends, to have different opinions as long as we are rooted in the same principles. And it's our principles that the modern-day conservative is surrendering through debating our Constitution away with their own opinions. How many times have you seen the modern conservatives during one of their debates with the left, as they call it, interject the law or the Constitution? Thank God people are waking up to this truth. A thing is either true or false of itself, and it is neither made true or false by our views or opinions. Besides, opinions have influence on our opinions, and we can see what the modern-day conservatives have done with the opinions of both sides. They have forsaken principle. They leave off the founders' opinions, which were rooted in God's principles. Concerning the Supreme Court ruling on Obamacare, just think with me for a minute, friends. The moderate conservatives inadvertently are helping to divide America. They fall in line with the media mentality and have you thinking the Supreme Court is divided. Half liberal and half conservative. As if to say the left need not abide by the rule of law. When in fact, after doing research, you'll find that in many cases, the right is just as corrupt as the left. Neither the liberal or the conservative side of the Supreme Court has the right to break the law. We are all ruled by the same law, and we must all abide by that same law. Folks, it's not I'm a Republican or I'm a Democrat. Friends, we're Americans. And by the way, this applies to the Supreme Court as well. And concerning Obamacare, nobody expected the Supreme Court to rule outside their scope of power, yet they did. That, my friends, is defined out as tyranny. Thomas Jefferson again said to consider the judges as the ultimate arbiters to decide differences of all constitutional questions, a very dangerous doctrine indeed, and one which would place us under the despotism of an oligarchy where few rule over many. 
One more point. The modern conservatives have you believing their candidate is the only option. Well, who picked their option? The American people didn't. And if you don't vote for their option, then the modern day conservative will ridicule you and say you are hurting the cause. Well, friends, whose cause? Friends, this is World Wrestling Federation at its finest. They are on the same unprincipled team, folks, with the same lawless records. Who delivered up these options? The state-run media did. And the modern-day conservatives are falling right in line with their story, and a story it is. They are not your only choice. But if you believe them to be, well, then it is so. America, this is your government. You are the government, and your representatives work for you as one nation under God as an extension of we the people. It has rightly been said, you can fool some of the people all of the time, and all the people some of the time, but you cannot fool all of the people all of the time, and God at no time. And yes, this also applies to the modern-day conservative. My resolve, the Bible is for the government of the people, by the people, and for the people. There is such thing, friends, as the government breaking the law, and in this particular situation, that's exactly what they're doing. The question I have for you is, are you going to let them get away with it? That's that's fantastic. That is fantastic. And if, folks, you're watching this and you don't now see what the issue is, then... Uh, I encourage you to go to Bradley's website and take in all the information that you can get from there. Bradley, let's let's run down through some of these things that uh, that I circled today from this article. And this concerns uh, President Trump. And again, um, this is not going to be popular with some people, but that's not what we're doing here. It, it, this isn't about popularity. This is about the truth. And so. We want to shine the light of truth on what's happening in our nation today. And for us to think that the danger only lies on one side of the aisle or we're only in danger, depending on who's in the White House, that that is just that is the height of stupidity, in my opinion. So, Bradley, President Trump vowed in a video message to the March for Life on Friday couple of weeks back to veto any legislation that weakens the protection of human life. He said, and this is a quote, if they send any legislation to my desk that weakens the protection of human life, I will issue a veto and we have the support to uphold those vetoes. Well, simply put, that's a bald faced lie. Is it not? That's right. Well, what we're being told by this current administration And what is actually happening are two different stories. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. In 2017, we were told that President Trump was going to sign a bill that was going to ban uh, the funding of Planned Parenthood. Well, we were told that he signed that bill, and it was partially banning and cutting off the funding being allocated to that on an international basis. Well, what happened in 2018, and by the way, Barack Hussein Obama teed this up uh, back in 2015. It's on Breitbart News, and it was Paul Ryan in his first legislative act betrays the American people. It's the very bill that Donald Trump signed last year, and it was a $1.3 trillion omnibus bill uh, under the guise of national security behind the weekend of the March for Our Lives. This was all done during that weekend. And it was interesting to note, when you looked inside of that bill, it not only funds uh, our enemies without and within, but it also fully funds Planned Parenthood. In 2018, it came out on CNS News and others, pro-life outlets, that Donald Trump just betrayed the American people on the abortion front. So what did he do last week? He has to put up false pretenses in... uh, continuously deceive the American people into believing that he is completely pro-life. And what most people don't want to pay attention to, and this is what it comes to, Mike, they're willfully blind. They have their fingers on their eyeballs. They don't want to see what their king is doing. And this is a fact. Because when Jesus Christ, in, in parallel with Scripture, when Jesus was being crucified, 
keep in mind, they were the ones, it was the Pharisees of the day and the Herodians. And Jesus told us to beware of the leaving of the Herodians and the leaving of the Pharisees. Religious hypocritical doctrines on both sides. Wasn't it interesting that it was the religious people that had Christ crucified because they didn't want to lose their place or their nation that were crying out, we have no king but King Caesar. That spirit's very much alive. And people don't understand scripture from Genesis all the way to Revelation that over and over and over again, the prophets were sent to what? Throw off corruption. It's the church's job to reprove it, yes. not to submit to it. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'd like to, the Holy Ghost is just leading me to something right now, Mike, concerning, yes. well, what about Romans 13? No, wait a second. What preceded Romans 13 uh, is Romans 12, 21, when the church was commanded by God mm. to overcome evil with good. Yes. Nowhere in Scripture can you find that we are to submit to tyranny. Nowhere in Scripture can you find that the church is told to bow in homage to that of a tyrant or a dictator or despotism or an arbitrary government in any sense of the word. Common sense does come into play here. And with that said, it's exactly what we're seeing today. I just posted last week, Mike, a picture of Donald Trump and putting on the post, I just have a question because I'm lost. I'm, I'm uh, playing the fool for a moment, all the while knowing what my end aim is, my objective in uh, bringing forth the truth. I put a picture of him and I said, why is it that the American people are being led and deceived of themselves willfully to actually believe that this is a pro-life president? And let me take it one more step. I couldn't believe, well, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I could believe, Mike. The attacks that came from those that called themselves Christians and conservatives and the word was, the spirit was, crucify him, crucify him. We have no king but Donald Trump. Yeah. That's exactly what's happening in this country today. And people don't want to see the truth concerning this administration, because if they did, then they would actually have to stand up and keep the commandments of the God that they say that they love. And that's where we're at today. And, I, uh, friends, I can go on with this issue with abortion. The president of the United States has all the power in the world to stop it the very first day he was inaugurated. And, again, this is just the tip of the iceberg. We're talking about abortion right now. And what this president has said on so many different fronts is what the American people want to hear. They don't want to pull the curtain back because, again, they don't want to deal with the issues at hand. Yes, yeah. And part of the part of the um, managed narrative Bradley, I believe, is is all of the uh, whether it's it's uh, real or or fake, the the vitriol from the left, those that supposedly uh, oppose Trump. Now, there's no doubt in my mind that at the grassroots level, there is actual um, hatred. And, and, and if the opportunity presented itself, it would manifest into violence. But a lot of what we see, especially in our media, especially in our media, especially in Washington, D.C., is is nothing more than scripted drama, in, in my opinion. Or is that overstating the, the it's, case? It's exactly, it, it's, it's exactly the truth of the matter. As a matter of fact, you're, you're probably understating uh, the fact of the matter. Let, let me tell you what Dr. Udo Ulfkat said. He was a German editor, a journalist that last year wrote a book exposing the media on a global scale that is owned and operated by none other than the CIA. He said the entire mainstream media is totally fake. He said uh, journalists, as they call themselves, they're useful idiots is what they really are. And Vladimir Lenin named them that, by the way. Yeah. They're taught to lie, taught to betray the people and not tell the truth to the public. He said the CIA gets control over all of the majority of journalists. A year later, he's dead through mysterious circumstances. And just to prove the point of what he said, it was William Casey under Ronald Reagan, the CIA director, that said, we'll know our disinformation program is complete when everything the American people and the American public believes is false. So 94% of the people in this country say they don't believe what the media has to say. But yet when the media says it, they go out and act accordingly as to yes. what they just got done saying that they did not believe. And it's yep. holding the truth and unrighteousness. So therein lies the problem is we have the people that call themselves good Christians in this country that are betraying the truth every step of the way like that of Judas Iscariot. 
Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Well, let's move on now. There. So there's uh, the pro-life uh, argument. Says he is, but practice, no. So, can I add something to that? Can yes, I add absolutely. Just one little uh, dovetail that? It's yep, interesting yep. because um, before Nancy Pelosi uh, was running to be the Speaker of the House again, keep in mind Donald Trump got up on cue and he said to the American people, his followers on Twitter, listen, if you don't want Nancy Pelosi as the next Speaker of the House, then this is what you need to do. Get out there and deal with the issue. What they're doing is they're gauging the people. They're seeing how much rule they have over the people, uh, namely over the 325.7 million people that we have in this country. They're gauging the people is all they're doing. They want to know what they actually do have control over. With that said, Donald Trump said, let's go ahead and you know just make sure Nancy's not the next Speaker of the House, all the while knowing that she's going to be the next Speaker of the House. They teed up for what they call the left, and that's exactly what they did. With that said, also keep in mind, when Donald Trump fully funded in 2018 that $1.3 trillion uh, omnibus bill under the guise of national security, keep in mind that bill fully funded Planned Parenthood. That same week that Donald Trump said, let's make sure she doesn't become the Speaker of the House, we found out that Nancy Pelosi was actually extracting money from Planned Parenthood. She was dipping into the coffers of Planned Parenthood to fund her campaign to become the next Speaker of the House. Now, let me ask you the question, Mike. Who funded it? Yeah. Donald Trump did. Yeah. Folks, this is WWF at its very worst. And, and I, I just need to say this. If you look at pro wrestlers, friends, do some homework on them. I did a whole piece. I got a video out there. A lot of these... Uh, um, these pro wrestlers that are set up as arch enemies that make uh, the WWF millions and millions and millions of dollars. The founder is a billionaire, and he's good friends with Donald Trump, by the way. And it's interesting to note that Donald Trump appointed his wife over the business affairs in the United States of America. But with that said, when I did some homework on these arch enemies in the pro wrestling um, uh, deception, they put on for the American people and people just buy into it and drink the Kool-Aid, as they say. It's, it's interesting to note that many of them are best friends. And you got to be kidding me to think that every single one of these that are being uh, put up as point men uh, in the United States government today are not playing the same game because they're not losing. It's interesting. They always put this opposition up between the left and the right, but isn't it interesting? They never lose. It's always the American people that lose incrementally through a little bit more of their compromise. And we all know what compromise is, Mike, where two parties both agree on what they both know is wrong. And that's exactly why we're in trouble in this country today. Amen, brother. Yep. So true. So true. So moving on now, Bradley, to, to, our, our second in amendment. Now, this uh, this president, Donald Trump, is supposed to be a big, big supporter of <laughs> our right to bear arms. But again, the the truth of the matter is a little different than than what most people believe, isn't it? It's absolutely true. As a matter of fact, I just went over to Pi Parkland High School yesterday. I'm in Florida right now. I just preached at Dr. D. James Kennedy's church yesterday. And last night I was at Rick Wiles' church, and then I did a national interview today on television with Rick. And then I shot over to Orlando so I could spend some time with my friend Mike. Um, and with that said, I stopped by Parkland School. And I just wanted to see for myself what the whole setting looked like, because I have friends that are police officers in that particular district. And a lot of people question what really took place there. And to get into that just a little bit, it's interesting they have 70 cameras uh, that allegedly filmed this school shooter, and yet none of that film has been released yet to the American people, and it probably will not. And the reason they're not releasing that film is because it contradicts eyewitness accounts every step of the way. Now, with that said, going to the next point, Donald Trump, after this alleged school shooting took place, it's interesting to note, and I'm not saying nobody got killed, by the way. I'm just saying what we're being told is probably not what really happened. False flag attacks is what they're called. And with that said, it's interesting to note that Donald Trump, his first response was, take their guns first, due process second. Mm -hmm. wait, wait a second. I thought you were a pro-gunner. I thought you were uh, there to uphold the Constitution against all enemies, both foreign and domestic. I mean, apparently Donald Trump doesn't run 
uh, realize that those that serve we the people derive their just powers from the consent of we the people. And with that said, the, the uh, American people, especially all the Second Amendment uh, gun, gun, um, pro-gun rights advocates, uh, were, were like astounded. They were taken back at Gus that he would even say anything like that. Well, folks, that's all you have to do is Jesus said, judge men by their fruits, Matthew seven sixteen. And how many times did Jesus say, be not deceived, be not deceived, be not deceived. Mm -hmm. Many will come in my name. Well, what does that mean? Don't be deceived by people calling themselves Christians. Read 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen when you get a moment. But going back to uh, Matthew seven sixteen, we're to judge them by their fruits. Mm -hmm. Most people don't know that during the first 500 uh, days of Donald Trump, uh, Trump's tenure, uh, his incumbency into the People's White House, that over 55 new gun legislation acts have been implemented unlawfully and illegally against we the people in this country in 26 different states by a majority of what you would call the right, the Republicans, the good people in this country, stripping the American people's rights right under the nose of this new administration. And why are they doing it? Well, as they say, they'll always do whatever you let them get away with, Mike, and it's exactly what they're doing. Because right now, the American people are sleeping because yes. they're led to believe that this president is actually there upholding their God-given rights when nothing could be further from the truth. He's doing just the exact opposite. He just banned bump stocks. And now gun owners of America, the Constitution Party, is now wide awake. Uh, as are some of the, today's conservatives. I'm talking about some of the conservatives that Fox News uses, uh, yesterday's liberals in so many different ways. And again, I'm not name-calling. I'm just trying to get people to understand the severity of what's going on and how these people have compromised uh, our blood-bought freedoms. Um, yeah. And with that, an honor to those that sacrifice themselves to give us the freedoms that we have, both in the spiritual first and then in the natural. But look what's happening here. Now we're talking about a new Speaker of the House. Their whole agenda is to disarm the American people. Well, uh, we have representatives in the United States of America unlawfully, namely uh, mayors masquerading as mayors, which in fact are committing the act of felony by luring illegals into the United States of America, by luring people from the Middle East that want to conquer this country. Well, people, that's all we have to do is realize that we're the main uh, obstacle. Uh, to a new world order, which, by the way, nobody might can deny anymore. Nobody can. Yep, that's exactly right, Bradley. And let's let's pick that point back up because that's a very important point that that uh, that we need to, to to discuss. But why should people, Bradley? Why should we be very very concerned about William Barr as the Attorney General? Well, it's, the gun owners of America is actually the ones that are responsible for putting this new article out. And they found out that William Barr uh, paid his dues many years ago under the Bush administration, senior, when Ruby Ridge took place, when the federal government tried to set up Randy Weaver as a, uh, an, an informant uh, in his backyard, in his area. And he didn't go along with it, so the FBI ended up setting him up. And what they did is they surrounded his house illegally. And what they did is they began to shoot at Randy Weaver, a friend of his, his boy, his dog, his wife, and his baby. And what's interesting to note is the American government friends, outside of uh, who we are, it's foreign to American government, by the way, uh, actually took aim at killing everybody in that house. And what they ended up doing is killing Randy Weaver's 14-year-old boy. They ended up shooting his dog. His wife had come outside the front door with a baby in her arms, not suspecting a sniper's going to take a shot at her, ends up shooting her in the head with the baby in arm. The next morning, your federal government, America, listen to me carefully. I'm not talking about a third world country. Your government, America, had the audacity to have one of their agents with a megaphone talking to Randy and the other man inside of the house talking about how his wife and son need to get up and make breakfast after they shot them both dead. Not a one was charged at the end of the day. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, rolling back just a little bit. The man that was inside with Randy Weaver lawfully shot back at those that were trying to kill them in their house. And keep in mind, 
because they wouldn't allow the government to set them up. He was exonerated. Randy Weaver won $3.1 million in suing the American government. And here's the kicker. Not one person was charged for murder on the side of the government. You know who was standing there trying to defend the government concerning the crimes committed against the people that they are sworn to serve? William Barr. He was a part of the, the defense. He was in the talks. And it's also interesting to note that we know that he's a gun confiscation advocate. And, of course, this is all Donald Trump's nominee. Yes. I need not say any more because what they're doing is very telling. Yeah. That's folks that alone should make your blood boil right there. That that is a classic bait and switch. We've 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 given the guy enough cover to where he'll pass. Must listen. If the Democrats know that and they do know it, why aren't they bringing any of this up? Because they don't they want him there. Now, they're going to act like they don't. They're going to fuss and scream and holler. But at the end of the day, this guy's going to get. He's going to get the, the, the post of attorney general because both sides want him in there. Do you, do you know how you can, Mike, I'm, I'm sorry to cut you off, but this just dropped in. Do you know how you can always tell what they're doing? Because what you call the Democrats, what you call the left, what you call the socialists, are now standing up and saying that they're going to oppose this nomination. They're, and listen, you have to understand it. This is communist tactics every step of the way. They're not opposing his nomination. They're confirming his nomination. You can mark my words. They are not opposing him. They are confirming him, and it's exactly what's going to happen. Yeah. So more more theater for the base that doesn't know any better. That's right. They're yeah. actually wow. creating support. The more they attack Donald Trump, what people don't realize, just like Vladimir Lenin said, the Russian revolutionary, he said, "Listen, if we don't have what we need concerning the issues, we'll just go ahead and create them." And and this is nothing new under the sun, neither. We'll leave the opposition ourselves. We'll create our own opposition. How do you explain that? Do you remember Donald, or not, I'm sorry, uh, Adolf Hitler? He used to send out the brown shirts. And whenever he wanted to push forth an agenda, and it wasn't out there, the, the crisis that they needed, they would go out and create the crisis. And once they go out and create the crisis, after they created the crisis, Adolf Hitler's brown shirts would create the crisis. He would come then in behind them, and he would then be the problem solver. But what most people didn't realize is he just garnered more power through what he just created. Yep. Yep. That's absolutely right. Folks, we are uh, we're within uh, 15, 17 minutes or so. I'm just wondering if there's anyone in the queue that has a question they'd like to ask of Bradley or a comment they'd like to make, then just uh, you'll have to unmute yourself. I want to give you this opportunity. It'll probably be the only opportunity you're going to have for this show. So got a question. <laughs> Speak now. Comments or questions. Anything on Facebook, Kathy? YouTube. Hey, Bradley. Yes, sir. This is JR. Uh, How do we get out of the situation we're in, whether Donald Trump is for real or whether he's not? How do we get out of this situation? Well, let let me ask you the question, because you just put you just put the fruit. In question, How, how do you deny what's produced? I mean, an apple tree will bring forth apples. An orange tree will bring forth oranges. Do I look at an apple tree and say, well, if that really is an apple tree, no, no, no. Let's call it for what it is, because until we do, we're going to be stuck in this cycle. I mean, haven't we seen enough of this taking place in our country? We see it cycle after cycle after cycle after cycle. The American people don't wake up. And you want to know why they don't wake up? Because they don't want to wake up. The way to bring about resolve, first of all, Americans need to understand that we subject ourselves to no power but that of Jesus Christ. Knowing your history and understanding the flags that were flying during the Revolutionary Wars appeal to heaven. It didn't say appeal to Caesar. It didn't say appeal to King George III, who wouldn't be ruled by God. If you read three quarters of the documentation of the Declaration of Independence, what is it? It's our forefathers throwing off a man, a king, across the pond, as they said, that would not be ruled by God. That's why our forefathers said either we're going to be ruled by God or we're going to be ruled by tyrants. 
when it goes to Donald Trump, keep in mind, um, when he first went into the evangelical movement because he had to do that to win the, appro- uh, the approbation of the American people, he was the one that said he never did anything wrong. He didn't need to repent. Well, that counter scripture. And what does scripture tell us? He who is without sin, he that says he's without sin, is a liar and the truth is not in him. Let me tell you some firsthand experience concerning this president. We had a, a reporter from the Weekly Standard go on tour with us for a week. And after the, the tour was up, he asked me a gazillion questions when we were doing high schools in Indiana. And I asked him one question. I said, if there was one person that you could go back and point out, this is about 12 years ago. I said, if there was one person that you could go back and point him out and say that he was just not a good guy, who was it? This is 12 years ago, my friend, and I re- I've never forgotten this. He said, the only one that I've never liked who is an absolute, complete narcissist with every inch of his being was Donald Trump. And the fact of the matter is, is just tell me this. And let me put a question to you, to your question concerning the truth. What dictator in the history of mankind has ever been brought to absolute power by telling the people what they didn't want to hear? There isn't one. Yeah. This president is telling the American people everything they want to hear. And let me tell you this. When you look to Scripture in Matthew 13, 25, starting in 25, the Bible tells us that the enemy sowed tares while men slept. We need to wake up to righteousness. And what we need to do is take responsibility for what's going on in our country. And I want to say one more thing, too, because I I understand that there's a lot of professed Christians out there and conservatives that are saying, man, this guy's really radical. Wait a second, your forefathers were radical. And I want you to understand what's radical and what's extreme to me is when an American people, 325.7 million of them, see the crimes of what their government, their reflection is sanctioning through attack on our Christian constitution, attack on life within itself, sanctioning the murder of the innocent in the womb, saying now that we can allow men to marry men and women to marry women. The list goes on. That's extreme. That's radical. And what Christians need to do is put their feet on the rock and understand that the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church because the seed of the righteous is forever. And it is. We're not going anywhere. And if we do go anywhere, the Lord's going to raise somebody else up because at the end of the day, he's going to right the wrongs every step of the way, no matter what these people, these wicked people, think that they're getting away with because they're not getting away with anything because that's the end of their lives, too. The Bible tells us that no man's able to keep his own soul alive. At the end of the day, they're going to bow their knee and profess that Jesus Christ is Lord, too, because it's appointed unto men once to die, and after this, the judgment, Hebrews 9.27, and that applies to every single one of us in this country. America needs to repent. The message is repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, and it also tells us to awake to righteousness and sin not. And then it tells us in uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 13.35, Uh, For some have not the knowledge of God. What's happening is plain as the nose on our face, and the answer comes between us and God, Acts 20, verse 21. Yes. Amen. All right. Well, thank you for that, Uh, JR. I didn't didn't say that insincerely, my friend. I really didn't. Follow up, JR, or you good? No, I'm good. I get that. We have a lot of discussion to do among, among the church. Right. Yes. Absolutely, brother. Yeah, I I agree with that. I agree with that. Do you remember when do you remember when Elijah was out on the back of the mountain and uh, Jezebel just had all the prophets killed and there were 7000 that didn't bow the knee? And do you remember how they were hunting down um, Elijah like a dog? Literally, Mm -hmm. they had to get rid of him. And Ahab met him in the backside of the desert, didn't he? In 1 Kings 18. And what's the first thing that the corrupt king said to him? a just and holy prophet of God. He said, the troubler of Israel. And what did Elijah say back to him? I'm not the troubler. It's you and your father's household that have forgotten Mm. your father's commandments. Let's put rebel in perspective here. Yeah. Amen. (laughs) Amen. Okay. So while all that's going on, Bradley, we, we, the economy, which, which allegedly, was roaring and on fire and, and everybody was happy. 
kind of hit the doldrums somewhat when uh, when the Democrats gained control of the House. Again, uh, you have to understand the charade that's going on here. Mm-hmm. But but what but what I want you to touch on now is really what uh, is is uh, it's been described variously as as NAFTA on steroids or um, uh, TPP on steroids. That's this new well, it's called a trade agreement, but it's really not a trade agreement. The the USMCA, yep. United States, Mexico, Canada trade agreement that kind of flew under the radar I, I think the media learned a little something about about nafta and, and tpp and so they kept it on the down low somewhat this thing is worse than the other two combined yes it is uh I and can why, give you and why real, is that yeah well i can give you a real short answer answer yeah uh, well they got the american people diverted to the wall that was promised to them and keep in mind that wall was promised on the campaign trail but then again so was the prosecution of hillary clinton yeah. And keep in mind, within 41 seconds after Donald Trump's uh, victory speech, he said that the American people owe Hillary Clinton a major debt of gratitude for her service to our country. By the way, that's exactly word for word verbatim what he said. Mm-hmm. He was later asked why he didn't bring forth prosecution. He said, oh, the Clintons, they've been through enough. They're good people. It was just political talk. It's what the people wanted to hear. Mm-hmm. And he told them what they wanted to hear. Now, going over to that of uh, NAFTA and the USMCA, here's the short answer. Well, they got your attention on the wall. Remember, the Mexicans were going to pay for it. Remember, when it first started out, it was going to cost $4 billion. These are all interviews by Donald Trump, by the way. He said $4 billion. Then he said $5 billion. Then he said $6 billion. Then he said $8, $10, $12 billion. And one of the last interviews is now the wall is going to cost $25 billion. This is now, he's the president now. He doesn't have to worry about what he said because he knows that he's going to get a pass by his followers and his worshipers, literally. And guess what? Nobody's paying attention to it. Now they're trying to raise their own money to build a wall because he's not producing what he promised he would do. Also keep in mind it went from the Mexicans paying for it to now we the people are paying for Mm -hmm. and Mexico will pay us back. This is all of what he did in the face of the American people, and they still think he's producing good fruit. Well, they have you looking at a wall over in uh, on the southern border. Don't forget about your northern border, neither. Look what's going on there. Mm -hmm. Uh, But what's interesting to note is NAFTA wasn't a good deal. No, just like health care, guess what they want to do? They want to rename it. So what they do is come up with something called USMCA. What does it do? It gives power to eradicate, guess what? Sovereignty of the United States of America, giving power over to that of foreign entities to implement at will what they so desire, giving power to what? The UN. It's helping establish a global order. There's your short, uh, there's your short answer. Yep. So yep. while you're looking at NAFTA and you're thinking that they're concerned about the wall, no, they just got you. They just got you distracted. They diverted the American people into looking at this crisis that they created over there on the southern border. And it's interesting to note what he just got done doing under the table while everybody was asleep. This is exactly what they did with guns. And if I might add and interject, what's next is none other than the Health Care Act, which is a violation of Article One, Section Eight of the U.S. Constitution. Now, it went from Romney Care, if you remember right, to Obamacare, to the Affordable Care Act. Now, with Paul Ryan asking to suggest Donald Trump didn't know how much of a traitor this man was, Paul Ryan, they tried to rename it. So they did. And what are they calling it now? American Health Care Act. And why are they going to try to push it through with that now? Because everybody loves Donald Trump. What an easier way to do what they want to do. So that's what's coming up next. And you can rest assured that's what's coming up next. Your sovereignty has now been given away. This country, without a shadow of a doubt, it's time for the American people, especially the church, to get into the ark now because it's raining like crazy. And I'm talking about the judgments of God. That's where America is at today, like it or not. That's not a hopeless message, by the way, because after every chapter of Leviticus 26 and Deuteronomy 28, there's always mercy extended to the people that repent before God. That's where we're at today. And uh, what we need to do is get back to 
who we are in Christ. And really what this comes down to is men individually before corporately getting right between them and their God. And the message that I give is the one that Jesus gave. And what is it today? Because he hasn't changed. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's where we're at today. And Mike, I have to say one more thing because I don't want the people divided. I want people to understand that when you look to the Constitution and you look what man has done outside of their scope of authority and what party affiliates have done outside of uh, the U.S. Constitution, I want people to understand there isn't a left and a right in this country. There isn't anything that's constitutionally called the Republican Party or the Democratic Party. We are a constitutional republic. There is over 101 party affiliations today. You want to talk about confusion? Read Daniel 9. I want you to hear what John Adams said, and I will hold my peace. He said this over 200 years ago. He said, there is nothing I dread so much as a division of the republic, our republic, into two great parties, each arranged under its leader in converting measures in opposition to each other. He said, this, in my humble apprehension, is to be dreaded as the greatest political evil under the Constitution. We need to understand that we're ruled by law in this country, not by unconstitutional parties. Amen. Amen. Well, that's this. That is a perfect segue. Jared, could you bring up uh, Wisconsin Christian News, please? Wisconsin Christian News. Folks, um, Wisconsin Christian News. There you go. Jared's bringing it up. Bradley is going to be there in March. Rob Pugh is is putting on a uh, a conference there on uh, Friday the 8th. And Saturday the 9th in Marshfield, Wisconsin, uh, Bradley Dean will be there speaking. There you go. Thank you, Jared. Fantastic. March 8th and 9th, 2019, Bradley will be there speaking. Um, I would encourage you to go to the, to the website, Wisconsin Christian News, register for the conference. It's Friday evening, 6 to 9 p.m., and then Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Bradley's going to be speaking. Pastor Dan Fisher. Is going to be speaking. I'll be there speaking. Coach Dave will be there speaking. Doug Hagman will be there speaking. Uh, Leighton Howerton will be bringing the music. Folks, you gotta get to where these people are at, and they'll they're going to equip you. They're going to tell you the truth. They're going to give you something solid to take back, and then alert your family and your friends and your coworkers. People have questions out there today. Please. Take advantage of these situations where these people are at. Bradley, I really appreciate you joining me today and sharing your thoughts on on what's happening in our nation and what's going on with the press. Not a popular message, that's for sure, but it is the truth. The truth sometimes isn't popular at all, is it? No, love tells the truth. Hate is not. And uh, right. once we get our eyes fixed on the Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life, um, then we're all going to be good. And that's what's going to unify us is putting ourselves under the meek king of glory. And thank you for being so gracious. Thank you for the questions, JR. And thank you, Jared, for all the help. I totally appreciate you guys. Amen. Thank you, Bradley. Appreciate you. Uh, Jared, uh, with, with the last minute or so we've got left, how about uh, Salt and Light, um, Coach Dave Alive? Uh, Coach is having a conference in Canton, Ohio on uh, April the 12th, I believe, 13th and 14th, uh, Occupy 2019. Uh, if you live in this area, uh, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Ohio, West Virginia, I would encourage you to, to, to come to Canton, Ohio, April the 12th, 13th and 14th for the Occupy 2019 conference. Uh, a lot of fantastic speakers will be there. Um, there you go. Mark Trump, Tom Dunn, Russ Dizdar will be there. Uh, Chad Estes, David Arthur, Coach Dave will be there, of course. Um, and Mark Harrington, I mentioned him earlier. He's on uh, uh, our radio station now, and, and I will be there speaking. So fantastic. And then finally, the last uh, piece of information, the Go Therefore conference for 2019. We'll be here in Lima. Go thereforeconference.com is the website, folks. Um, that is July the 26th and 7th, Friday and Saturday here in Lima. 
I encourage you to uh, register on the website. That'll be functioning very, very soon. Uh, get your tickets early for that. Too many speakers to go over right now. Folks, I appreciate you joining me today. Don't forget to go to Dr. Mike Live if you'd like to support what I'm doing here on this program as well as other ministries. There is a donate button there, and I would appreciate your support. If the Lord leads you to do that, please prayerfully consider doing that. Folks, always remember, renewing our mind is not an option. I'll see you next Monday.